Technology. Revered by many, yet feared by Luddites and Facebook moms across the globe. Technological advancement is faster now than at any other point in human history, so it can be difficult to stay relevant. But only time can separate the true impactful innovations from their as-seen-on-TV wannabe cousins. So where does that put the electric vehicle? Will it be another case of video killing the radio star, or be left in the vault of come and gone tech fads like 3D television or Furbies? For a growing number of the population, they may vote for the former, and they'd point to Tesla as proof. Founded in 2003, Tesla Motors set their sights on developing automotive technology the likes of which the world had never seen, and by 2008, they began doing just that, thanks in part to Elon Musk's hefty cash infusion, freshly acquired from his recent sale of PayPal. Simply named Roadster, the Lotus Elise-based electric sports car was their first creation. It received acclaim from journalists and owners alike, touting otherworldly performance and a unique, exciting driving experience. But with the production of less than 2,500 cars over four years, it wasn't yet mature enough to consume the attention of the masses. Enter the Model S. Introduced in 2012, it silently exploded onto the scene, catching intrigue and critique by all. At a base price approaching six figures, though, you couldn't exactly argue that it was officially an EV for the masses. But that didn't stop it from spreading like, well, I won't make the analogy. With the Model S, EVs would no longer be associated with organic deodorant-wearing tree huggers. No. Tesla was for the bourgeois. With elegant styling and a chic, minimalist interior, it's like a modern home on wheels. You could now go faster than everyone, look good, and pretend you're an environmentalist. Anyone who's anyone couldn't be caught dead without one. But for the rest of the world, it was still unobtainium. Until now. These days, Second-hand Teslas can be had for the same price as a well-optioned Honda Civic. But as used EVs become ever more tantalizing, the questions on everyone's mind remains. What's the longevity like for an electric vehicle? And how much will it cost when the battery needs to be replaced? Learn all this and more on today's episode of High Mileage Reviews. 425,000 miles. It's the equivalent of circumnavigating the Earth 17 times, or driving around your mom twice. So you might expect all of that mileage to reveal itself on the surface. Well, at first glance, it's no worse for wear than any other seven-year-old vehicle. The black paint readily shows a spattering of rock chips at the front, and swirl marks across the rest of the body. Pretty normal. Look closer, and you'll find that the corners of the vehicle are no stranger to the occasional scratch and scuff. Uh, it happens to us all. There's also oxidized fog lights and condensation in the taillights. Not entirely unusual, though subpar for a six-figure car. However, as with any aging Californian, it's a suspicious lack of apparent flaws that makes you wonder what secrets they're hiding. Take, for example, the retracting door handles. In their current state, they all work effortlessly. But the secret they hide is how many have been replaced. Let's count, shall we? <clears throat> One, ah, uh, ah, uh, two, three, oh dear, four, ah, uh, ah, uh, five, oh, still going, uh, six, seven, seven door handles, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yes, it's true. A grand total of seven door handles have been replaced over the years. Turns out, the little gear within the actuator is easily worn down, causing the mechanism to fail. A shop will want nearly $1,000 and a kidney to replace just one out of warranty. I can only imagine how a colder climate would exacerbate this design flaw, as there isn't much to prevent the handles from freezing shut in the winter. A for effort. Moving on, the final secret this Tesla hides is at the wheels. They've all been replaced. After over 400,000 miles, the original wheels suffered a hideous rash, as well as severely wallowed out lug mounting holes. Needless to say, they were due for an upgrade. It now wears the 19-inch slipstream-style alloys found on newer models. Tesla will sell you a new set of these slipstream wheels with tires for just $2,500 if you're interested. A mere pittance. 
Welcome to the room where it happened. The Model S interior is ground zero for trendy minimalistic design cues, where less is more and ergonomics are for losers, like Apple did with the iPhone. Everything has been condensed to fit on a single screen. Like it or not, nearly every feature is accessible only through the Media Control Unit, or MCU for short. Aside from overcomplicating simple tasks, this design choice faces one big dilemma. What happens if the system malfunctions, like this one did just a few years ago? Naturally, you lose a host of functionality. No rear view camera, HVAC controls, turn signals, or radio. And worst of all, you won't even be able to play Asteroids anymore. What a rip! Luckily, this unit was replaced under warranty. Expect to pay upwards of $2,000 for a replacement MCU out of warranty. Tesla will even upgrade it with newer hardware for added convenience. And unless you part with another 500 bucks, pre-2018 cars will lose all AM, FM, and satellite radio if you spring for the upgrade. In addition to all this, a second failure mode can befall the media control unit. You see, within the infotainment system resides what is called an EMMC, or Embedded Multimedia Card. They function similar to RAM in a computer. They've been recalled on earlier Model S and X vehicles, so expect similar loss of function if yours needs replacing. As for the rest, the interior has held up surprisingly well, especially considering the ass traffic these seats have seen over the years, primarily used for Uber. Countless posteriors, big, small, juicy, and dry, have all left their impression on these seats. Considering this, they could look a lot worse. Though, the driver's seat cushion was replaced due to accumulated wear. But hey, you'd collapse too if I sat on you all day for five years straight. And finally, if you're wondering why the gauges look like they've been sneezed on by a baboon, it's because the adhesive which binds the screens together has failed. This is an increasingly common issue and can also affect the main touchscreen. Just don't sneeze or you might make it worse. <laughs> oh, bless me. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. How many batteries has this car needed? And what about the motors? Steering, suspension, and the range? Oh, we gotta know about the range! Whoa there, buddy. One thing at a time. Let's start with the battery. Perhaps unsurprising, this car does not have the original battery. At around 250,000 miles, it was replaced under warranty, which at the time was an eight-year unlimited mileage perk. The service history associated with the car does not indicate the reason for replacement, but it can be assumed that the accelerated wear caused by daily supercharging had caused the battery capacity to drop below an acceptable range. Current warranties only cover the battery pack for 8 years or 150,000 miles, so keep a cool $15,000 to $20,000 on standby for a new battery if your warranty is expired. With regards to range, well, the current battery in this Tesla has already amassed 175,000 miles, and charging capacity is limited to 87%, yielding just a hair over 200 miles per charge on a good day. It should also be noted that charging speed for older batteries is nerfed to avoid accelerated damage. So feel free to watch a few more of my videos while you wait at the station. Next, let's investigate the electric motors. This is an all-wheel drive 70D so it has two motors. More specifically, it's equipped with what are called small drive units, as opposed to the large drive units found on performance models. More on those later. At 375,000 miles, this vehicle was serviced to have a new front drive unit installed under warranty. Once again, reasoning is unclear, but generally one can assume that the shaft bearings had exceeded their life expectancy, causing vibrations and noise. And gosh darn it, if you wanted a car that made noise, you would have bought one that had an engine. So out it went. Now, regarding the aforementioned large drive units optioned in the performance models, buyer beware. These motors have a fatal flaw. With their added power, they require liquid cooling to operate effectively. Similar to head gasket failure on a combustion vehicle, the seal which keeps coolant from entering the motor, or in this case, sensitive electronics within the drive unit's rotor and stator, often fails. When this happens, coolant can circulate through the motor internals, frying it like an egg on a Phoenix sidewalk. Completely toast. Hmm, eggs and toast. Crap, now I'm hungry. Anyway, without a warranty, don't be surprised to pay upwards of $15,000 for a new drive unit. 
Wrapping up the mechanical repairs, the brake pads and rotors were replaced for the first and only time at 300,000 miles, along with the AC compressor. And at 375,000 miles, new upper control arms, front lower four links, front aft links, rear upper links, and rear axles were all replaced. You could say replacing the entire car is just routine maintenance for a Tesla owner. But hey, at least you don't have to change the oil. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next mile.